Praise the Lord. Greetings to you all in the precious name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Thanking you all for listening to this broadcast of God's Word. Let's turn our Bibles to Matthew chapter 6 verses 9 to 15. Matthew chapter 6 verses 9 to 15 is known as Jesus' prayer or Lord's prayer. But when we study the content of this particular prayer, we understand that this is not Jesus' prayer or Lord's prayer, but Lord, Lord teaching to his disciples and this is disciples' prayer. And in fact, we understand that this is the model as we have to pray. Often times it is understood as Lord's prayer, but we have to understand this is the prayer that is containing certain elements that we should include in our prayer daily. Many people they take this prayer and use it in their ceremonies wherever they have a function. Towards the end they used to recite this prayer without knowing its meaning. I do not know whether we need to use it like that or not. But it is important that the ingredients of this prayer must be assimilated into our prayers in our daily life. Let's examine what are the ingredients of the prayer is found here. First of all in verse number 9 we understand that it starts with a worship. So that simply tells us that our prayer should always begin with worshipping God. This also gives us a teaching that children of God should pray with a worshipping attitude. Those who call their father God or call their God father and they are the one here praying because they call our father in heaven. Who can call God father? The only people who believed in Jesus Christ or who the people who are saved by God can only call our God Father. So it's an important thing for a believer to pray. When you talk about a believer as a bird, birds have two wings and prayer and the reading of the word of God are the two wings a believer should have. That will help him to go forward in his Christian life. Worship is something that the children of God need to do. We are primarily worshippers and we need to worship our God. When you talk about worship, it has three aspects. First of all, personal worship and that we do every day in our lives, collecting God's blessings in our life. Moreover, realizing who God is. Secondly, we can do the same thing in our family. That's familial worship. And then we can do it in our church or in the community where we are as a collective worship. So we have these three aspects of worship and this worship should be there or this worshipping mentality should be there when we pray to God. So we understand that God deserves our worship. He is worthy of being praised. So we need to worship God every time, especially when we come for praying, we have to understand his worthness and we need to understand his uh, help in our lives and we need to thank God and let us start our prayer with worship. Secondly, when we come to the attitude of prayer, we need to have submission. We need to have submissiveness in prayer. Especially when we read uh, the submission part, we have to see verse number 10. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Even though we have several requests and several kind of supplications and we are telling to God, Lord, even though I am putting forth these requirements, but you need to do it according to your will and purpose. Have your way, have your will be done 
in our life in my prayer so this is actually you are sincerely seeking the will of god to happen in this world in our life in our very prayer in the in our prayer matter god's will should be done of course we intimate our wishes to god but we desire with our whole heart that his will and his decision should take over our desire submitting to god for his will to take precedence in our life is inevitable when we pray so when we pray we need to have a submitting mentality a submissiveness we need to have in our prayer then verse number 11 says that we need to make our supplications to god the supplication has some peculiarity here when you read verse number 11 that's a simple sentence it says give us today our daily bread when you examine this whole verses we understand this is the only physical request that we can find it has three characteristics first of all this is not requesting for an individual need rather it is asking for a collective need how do we know we know from the pronoun the pronoun used there is singular not singular but it is plural give us give us so when you talk about god they talk our father in heaven and then here we understand that give us our daily bread today so first of all this is not an individual request but this request is a collective request seeking the benevolence of everyone who is with that person who is praying secondly it is not asking for tomorrow or day after tomorrow or for a week long rather it is asking for today's bread that means we need to depend on god daily for the needs that we have so a daily dependence should be there when we pray thirdly we understand it is for today's food that is satisfied satisfied request a request from the satisfaction yesterday he was satisfied and today he is seeking for satisfaction from god so we understand we are not asking for anything excess we are not asking for anything to uh, spend in our luxury rather we are asking for our need only for our need so that's why we understand that this prayer is so important we have to examine our life how are we praying are we praying to spend in our luxury life are we praying to have a security in our uh, a uh, future life or are we praying to have uh, uh, everything together for us without depending on god daily basis on a daily basis that is very important for us to think first of all we have seen there should be a worshiping mentality in praying secondly we need to have a submissiveness in praying thirdly we need to have a request that is Uh, really focusing on the on the daily need and also dependence on god fourthly we need to have a lifestyle where god would hear our prayers that simply says forgive our debts as we have forgiven our debtors verse number 12 it simply says we need to have a lifestyle where we forgive others who are depending on us who are uh, fellowshipping with us who are always uh, being together with us we need to have a clear lifestyle with them if they wrong to us we should forgive them if we don't forgive them we are not supposed to ask god lord you please forgive me This is a requirement from the part of a person who is praying that we should effectuate before we utter a word of request in our prayer. We must forgive our debtors. What is the meaning of the debtor here? Someone depends on you or someone owes you something. 
what is your attitude towards such people are we ruling over them are we playing a mastery over them are we making their life miserable then we are not supposed to pray to god because god is our master and we are praying to that master jesus told a story of a person who had received mercy from his master did not show that mercy the iota of that forgiving mentality he had not shown to the debtor who had owed him comparatively a lesser amount remember that parable and understand that we need to forgive others when we pray to god and we ask forgiveness to god finally we have to understand the prime purpose of our prayer should be the deliverance spiritual deliverance Verse number thirteen says, "And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil one." The real intention behind the prayer is spiritual deliverance. Spiritual well-being is the foundation of all other happiness in Christian life. We know Satan is roaming here and there as a roaring lion, so that he can swallow us. He can defeat us. but jesus says you need to trust in me come near to god so that satan will run away and a spiritual deliverance is very much important when jesus was in the garden of gethsemane he saw his disciples were sleeping without a, a praying they were sleeping and jesus told them please pray that you may not enter into temptation so our primary aim should be for spiritual deliverance Sometimes we pray for so many things. Many of our prayers are physical needs, but we need to focus on spiritual need. How many of you ask others to pray for your spiritual well-being? How many of you tell others, "Please pray for me because I am feeling some kind of lethargic situation in my spiritual life. I'm not able to read the Bible. Please pray for me." I am not able to spend time in prayer please pray for me are you ever asking such needs then you are focusing on spiritual things our aim in prayer is to pray for spiritual deliverance let me summarize here we have seen five things with regard to prayer from the model prayer that is taught by Jesus to his disciples first of all we need to have a worshiping mentality in prayer secondly we need to have a submissiveness in prayer asking for god's will to happen in our lives thirdly we need to make our supplications not as an individual request rather a collective request that will benefit everyone moreover we need to tell god that we depend on him daily and we should not ask for luxurious things rather for the daily needs and the needs that we have daily then as fourth point i told about that we need to have a lifestyle where god would honor us and he will be able to forgive our sins and grant our supplications towards the end i said the prime aim of our prayer should be deliverance spiritual deliverance may god help all of us to have the prayer designed by jesus christ to be prayed effectively in our day to day lives may the almighty god help all of us to do that amen